hello and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. And today we want to talk about one of the biggest cornerstones in 3D beat-em-up gaming. Don't get me wrong, the game Tekken, the game there I should say, get my finger right there, boom, Tekken. It might not be the first 3D game, but it was the first one that really pushed the boundaries of that genre. The first game of course for Virtua Fighter really, and everyone has to give full respect to Virtua Fighter, but Tekken is the one that made it cool, it made it adult, it had a combo system, it had a fantastic story, incredibly compelling, that has spanned now over seven titles and even more and more subtitles as well. The game itself was an absolute smash in the arcades and it really spawned a new kind of gaming because, and Virtua Fighter once again, we can't rob them of this. It, it wasn't the first game to have a more professional feel in the, in the fighting quadrant because having a game released for the first time that takes everyone by storm, particularly a beat-em-up, is hard because most games, because of this um, control scheme, take a while to adopt and get used to. Think of Street Fighter 2 when it first came out. There was a time when Street Fighter wasn't the behemoth that it is today and the same thing goes for Tekken. But with Tekken, it introduced so much more compared to the first entry into 3D uh, Virtua Fighter. Now these two games would be continuously faced off against one another. In my opinion with Tekken becoming the overall um, winner of that face off one against the other but we never saw the two against each other, well at least not in 3D and not officially. Although there is a game out there that I will bring over at some point um, onto the channel for the Mega Drive, a uh, booted ROM of X, uh, Tekken versus Virtua Fighter but we will play that another day. But this is Tekken, the arcade game, one of Nango's biggest game licenses of all. We'll be doing some trivia later on, and by the way, this has more trivia than any other video I've ever done. Which again, for a first release game, is really impressive. But without further ado, let's get into the game. First things first, the fact that the characters we've got to count down this, we know our time. These characters were not the limit. There were so many secret players in Tekken, but we'll get to that later on. But all these characters, every single one of these, has existed in one shape or form in every single Tekken game. Moreover, their controls haven't changed. Now the control dynamic of Tekken is a four button interface. Um, it is left punch, right punch, left kick, right kick. And all of those respond to um, uh, the limbs of the characters so let's see if we can get some of the traditional combos going without a control stick I do have difficulty doing the hurricane here now we're going for a one round um, battle system here we're just going to remove that so we can get all the way through to the ultimate boss and he was a, um, a secret unplayable boss once Heihachi Mashima Again, if we there is a button as well, it should be mentioned. They did take the 3D genre very seriously. To consider underneath my name, you could actually change the camera. Something you never want to do outside of a replay. Let's face it. Let's see if the um, yep throw system is exactly the same. To do any throw in Tekken, you press. Every character has at least two throws that change depending on where you grab the, your opponent. So if you press left punch and left kick together. That was one throw and right punch and right kick was another throw but if you grab them from behind or from the side the throw changes also combinations combos felt more organic because to do the combo you would press what you thought you saw i've never seen this background before so bizarre you would see uh, yoshimitsu at a baseball game yoshimitsu of course is the alien character but no the game itself do does feature lots of stuff that once again, um, a Virtual Fighter could only dream about. Everything from the, the very compelling story, the characters had a genuine sense of um, vendetta and hatred towards each other in some cases. And of course the story of Heihachi and Kazuya and eventually um, Jin would go on for a long time. Same with Law and his son in Tekken 3. One thing that would disappear is the size of those jumps. The size of those jumps will change. Once again, I don't know why Law is here in the desert. Presumably people didn't get to use their own backgrounds. Oh, that looks like a game over. Now, of course, Law stylized on Bruce Lee there, even utilizing the outfit 
from, I believe, Enter the Dragon, but I'd have to double check that. So let's get back into this. Let's play someone new. Yoshimitsu. He of the incredibly fast and incredibly self-hating moveset. Such as that, if you do it too long, you get dizzy. You had another one where you could actually stab yourself in the chest with the sword. And of course, the sword in the left hand means that a lot of the time, if you just wanted to use the sword, all you had to do was use the left hand. Oh dear, I was trying to do the flippy move thing. Do you know what, let's pause it and get to some of that mountain of trivia. So, the game itself, Tekken 1, was originally released in arcades and it ended up being ported almost exclusively to Sony's PlayStation systems later on, but eventually would be um, free and more open. Namco would let other systems such as PC, Xbox, etc. and Nintendo, I believe, to a lesser degree, be able to play it. It was developed by uh, Namco, utilising their Namco System 11 arcade cabinet uh, system as well, which was actually utilising a number of follow-up games. I'm looking at you, Soul Calibur, another game we will, uh, Soul Edge, that we will see on the channel later. It was released in December 9th, 1994, so quite a late release compared to a lot of the games on this channel, but that is still 27, um, sorry, uh, yes, 27 years later. Um, uh, here we are today, so that is an insane length of time. Um, now, if we look at, uh, it was released in America only a few days after Japan, so they knew the game would do well with a worldwide release. Namco really pushed that out, unlike a lot of their titles that they only released in the East for the best part of six to eight, maybe even 12 months before North America and the rest of the world got had their hands on it. Now, let's go through, my, let's through some of this plethora of facts. One, it's the only Tekken game where the sub-bosses and the final boss cannot uh, be played against. They don't have an ending and you can't play as them unless you get some of the later cabinets that were released that opened up those characters. So every single character had a sub-boss that differed greatly, so, such as uh, um, sorry, uh, Nina had, uh, uh, Anna Williams had Nina, Yoshimitsu had Kunimitsu. Everyone had an opponent that was dedicated to them. Um, it's the only game where Nina Williams fights barefoot throughout, which is bizarre and pointless, but there you go. I mean, look at that desert. What kind of stuff are you going to get in your feet there? Uh, in the arcade version, selecting a fighter, if you select a fighter, their facial animation changes. Um, it's very similar to Virtual Fighter, but they suggested it was completely different. Virtual Fighter actually... Uh, the developers of Virtua Fighter tried to find a numerous ways in which they were trying to take Ketten, uh, take Ketten, take Ke um, Tekken to court to say basically you are ripping us off um, for our art artistic license. Um, but the names, the character's name is also announced as well, something that didn't happen uh, in the early version of Virtua Fighter and it kind of killed it. Um, Devil Kazuya is unlockable by beating the Gallagher minigame before the game loads up. And of course that features more on the console version, PlayStation 1, etc. So when you fight up against Devil Jin, that was a hell of a fight you had towards the end. Um, now, the only game in the series that has identical um, music for every character's um, is it, this is the only game that has identical character music for every character um, from uh, throughout the game. So everyone doesn't change. It's Their endings are, although there's animations and everything's different, but at the same time, the music never differs. Um, Mrs. Law can be seen in Yoshimitsu's ending, so whether that's Mrs. Law as in, um, there he is on the screen there, his wife or his mother, we I don't know. Maybe we'll get to that ending later on. Um, again, and Forest Law... Um, um, again, I'm going to say Law because I don't know his name, his first name, but his son appears also in Yoshimitsu's ending. Um, uh, King's ending features the di um, real digitised children, and again, that was reused. A lot of that technique actually would be, end up being hugely used in Tekken 2, but it was only featured in the ending of King. Um, in the PlayStation version, the stadium has a big screen that actually reflects the fight, something the arcade didn't have, even though the arcade at the time had superior hardware. Um, if you have a memory card uh, with completed Tekken 1 data from PlayStation 1 uh, and you play uh, Tekken 3, you can view the ending animations of Tekken 1, which is quite nice. Another little back throwback feature that was included with Tekken. In Jack's ending, the video machine that connects Jack is called System 11, which is the name of the hardware that's utilised for this, as I mentioned earlier on. Um, the only boss characters to have their name pronounced when you defeat them are Wang, who appears later on, and again, don't laugh at the name Wang, Lee, Heihachi, Armour King, 
Prototype Jack and Devil Kazuya. Um, other people just have this name off their respective playable um, character select screen character uh, voiced. Um, but in total, the game has 17 characters, not including Devil Kazuya. So you, and again, remember this is the moment of release. 17 characters is enormous. I mean, Super Street Fighter 2 had, what is it, 8 plus 4 plus 4. So that game at least had um, uh, 16 characters. So that's not bad, but this game outdone that, and it was in a 3D environment, and every character had a rich backstory, a number of which would go on to continue and develop as the Tekken series continued. Um, again, every stage has its own back background music, and this background music, as it went through different versions, say PlayStation 1, then when the Tekken 2 came out and it deviated to other systems, all of that music, they kept the original music and just enhanced it for each one. Me personally, Tekken 3 on the PlayStation 1 has the best music of not just any Tekken game, but almost any beat-em-up game I've ever played. If you don't believe me, Go and find it. Someone on YouTube must have it. Someone on Google, you can download it maybe. Uh, do pay for it. Um, but it is fantastic. Everything, the opening music, even the character select screen music is absolutely phenomenal. For that reason alone, it's worth me putting Tekken 3 on this channel. Um, um, now, Tekken is the only game where arcade mode is actually faithful to the original arcade game. It allows uh, players to compete to a timed record without being stuck within the setting. So you can actually set it so that instead of how many losses and your score, you actually say in time how long it takes you to complete the game. If you change characters, however, it will void any time ca uh, record. So a lot of people, if they were trying to go for a time challenge... The other character, they would get incredibly aggressive if someone put their coin on the table. Um, if Heihachi is selected in later uh, in revised versions where he became available, because you once you completed the game, the arcade machine would actually open up for the characters. Um, then he will face Devil Kazuya at the end. Um, the characters are in a fixed order. So it's Kunimitsu, um, when you release them, it was Kunimitsu, Kuma, Wang, um, Kuma the Bear, I should say. He is Paul's sub-boss. Uh, Wang, Gunryu, Gun Lee, Prototype Back, Jack, Armor King, King's opponent, um, Anna, and then Devil Kazuya. And if you do take the game, the PlayStation version, here's another little neat trick. If you've got the uh, console version, of Tekken 1, you can actually put it in a CD player and you'll have the soundtrack. It was actually dual purpose. So this was an insanely long section of trivia for a game, but it's definitely worth it because again, think, we're so used to these games being around and so used to Tekken, uh, you know, existing for all this time. But we're looking at the original, the original arcade even, the amount of internal content included of what we would refer to as Easter eggs is absolutely phenomenal. And it's nothing short of astounding. So let's get back into this game, shall we? Let's give Paul a go. How many of his original moves are in this game? Let's have a look. Let's go for that. Hit the dirt. Oh, he's still got his... Oh, I can't even... Has he got the counter? Oh, no. Do you know what? Well, we're not going to hand that in because that's just annoying me. I better get some more credits in. Let's get Jack. Of course, different variations of Jack would continue throughout the Tekken games. Jack is kind of the beast of the Tekken universe. Ooh. Nice. Because my brother used to be the guy that played up, as I've mentioned on the channel before, he would play the strong, slightly slower characters. I'd play the weak, fast ones. Jack v. Jack. Okay, we have ourselves a mirror match. I'll be honest, I'm getting annoyed that that didn't contact. Uh, we're playing with the camera now. Let's try that out before we go. Oh, 
double KO. There you go. We are throwing everything into this video today. Unfortunately, apparently double KO is still a loss. Let's head back to Kazuya, shall we? So I can actually get my head in the game. It makes more sense, doesn't it? And also, has anyone noticed? Alternate outfits. So now we've got the kind of Kazuya street outfit. See if we can get that spinny kick going. Oh, trying to get that move up. Not playing the game, is it? Kazuya. Oh, listen to that music. I forgot about the sweep punch. Oh, he absolutely mullered me. A few more currency, why not? Do you know what? We did quite well with Jack there, didn't we? You may notice I'm not playing as King. I am terrible with King. King is for people that enjoy playing Zangief. Ooh, that sweet move. Ooh, let's get back into that. Yoshimitsu, we're gonna we're gonna see this through, I think. Genuinely thought you might go into that. Oh, this move does not want to pull off. Unbelievable. I can probably hear you people on the other side of the screen getting super annoyed, and I don't blame you. The beautiful little sweet move doesn't exist yet. Must have been a Tekken 2. Oh, got that kick in there, right? Michelle Williams. No, oh, it's not Michelle. No. Oh, man, throw up on throw. Second time, that's beyond frustrating. Beyond frustrating. Do you know what? I'm going to leave it there because I'll be buggered if I'm going to get screwed over by two throws there. Oh, well, I have to, really, don't I? I could have walked away. See, this is how addiction starts. At least I got that throw in that time. Another character who would kind of disappear from the Tekken universe for a while, Lee. He was—he felt like he was the largely overlooked um, Heihachi son. I believe he features a secret character in uh, Tekken 2. Although I would say he has a, a not dissimilar move set. Oh my lord! Oh, this is starting to irk me a tad. Oh, hey, Hachi. 
Right. What the hell was that? All of this? Right, let's see what we're going to get for our trouble. King. Bizarre. And then, it, of course, that's the review. That gives you a little summary of all the people you fought. Which I've accidentally skipped, I'm sorry. But, there we go. We did the playthrough and I didn't even smash the controller. I got very, very close indeed. So, thank you so much for watching Robbie's Arcade today. Um, if you enjoyed this, I am going to be bunging on Soul Edge very shortly, and of course that Mega Drive mod of Street Fighter, I'm sorry, X-Men, oh, what the hell, Stuggy. Tekken versus Virtua Fighter, that strange mod that was released for the Mega Drive ROMs. Whether it made official release, I very much doubt it. But if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and if you do want to see other videos on the channel, do pop it in the comments. But otherwise, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. See what we get for our trouble, shall we? Let's get those letters in. Where am I? It's given I'm the only one that's been playing this. 50 hours, Sam. Disappointing. So, cheerio.